apparently this is the hot spot for broken 18 year old diesel trucks. 05 Chevy Silverado, Duramax diesel. It's got a little drip, coolant. I think the water pump is leaking. So I'm gonna replace it. And you guys are gonna see how our friends at Isuzu, they made a simple job way harder than it needed to be. Gotta be the water pump. That's either the ECM or the TCM, I can't remember which one. Don't work on a lot of Duramaxes, I don't know that much about them. Belt doesn't look great. I think I'll order a new one. Mm-hmm. 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 If this was a normal engine designed with human technology, the water pump would be here. It would be belt driven, a couple three bolts, 30 minutes, no problem. But apparently that wasn't good enough. So they used Japanese alien technology to make the water pump gear driven off of the timing gears. It's actually kind of down here. It's behind this big aluminum housing. And to replace it, we had to remove this pipe. We had to remove this big housing. And we also have to pull the damper, the harmonic balancer. It's a six hour job by the book. get the damper off we have to block the flywheel or flex plate or whatever you want to call it so pull this little inspection cover off you can take the starter off and jam a pry bar or something against the teeth over there but it's a lot easier to just pull this little inspection cover out and then Lyle makes a for real tool that slips in here it engages the teeth and it catches on the edge of this casting I can't remember exactly why I did this, but I ended up making my own. I guess I was in a hurry or something. And it worked, so I never did buy the for real tool. But that's all it is. It's just a little piece of steel. I welded some beads on the end and ground them into the rough shape of a gear tooth and then welded a lug on the back. Hopefully it works again. I think the for real size is 36 millimeter, 12 point. I've got an inch and seven sixteenths. I think that'll do the trick. There it is.
Come on, little buddy. There it is. Do, 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 do. Okay, the water pump is held on with one. three bolts those are the easy ones then there's two down here that come in from the back side I believe they go into the oil cooler and they're not much fun the bottom one you can get from the bottom pretty easily the top one, you kind of got to go in from the side. But we'll see. I think I can reach them. If I hold my mouth just right. Yep. There's one. And then the other one. Make sure you got your bucket ready, by the way. There we go. Nothing to it. Yeah, our housing looks pretty good. They do sell the water pump and the housing together as an assembly, you know, if your bearing goes out and chews this up, or if you got really bad corrosion, you would have to do that. I don't think we'll have to. So I got a brand new AC Delco. We'll get things cleaned up, put on some new O-rings and start putting her back together. Seems a little sloppy. Not sure why they would put the sticker right on the drive gear. I don't know about you, but I don't really want that inside my engine. Anyway, it's an AC Delco, but it's made in China. Now it says right here, do not use RTV silicone on formed rubber, O-ring, or metal gaskets. Failure to apply RTV silicone sealant to fiber gaskets will allow leaks. Excess use of RTV can cause failure. So I guess that means they want us to put RTV on that fiber gasket. I guess the instructions can't possibly be wrong. Okay, we need that one on there. That one goes on there. I think we're ready to put it back together. There it is. Okay, I gotta go look up torque specs for those. I don't know off the top of my head.
little bit of grease on that o-ring just to keep it where I want it. A little bit on the top one to help it go in. There's probably a better way to do that, I just don't know what it is. There's a key here. Uh pin that it has to fit over. There we go. It says put a little bit of engine oil on the bolt. Tighten it to 75 foot-pounds. And then go another 105 degrees. Bet she's going to be pretty tight at that point. I'm just going to take a big fat guess. So 105 would be just a little bit past 90. So we're going to say right there. I'm going to turn it until that's at the top. And that'll be good enough. Keep saying that. Okay. That'll do. Is this hose bothering you? Can't get it to stay where I want it. Right, we'll put our idler back on. Stand by. I think we might be done. I did go ahead and install a new belt and I replaced the thermostats. They're right here, it's not a big deal. I was gonna vacuum fill the cooling system but I couldn't get my little sucker to, to seal up here so I had to do it the old fashioned way. Luckily they did put a bleed screw here on the thermostat housing. So I think we got most of it in there. Let's fire it up. Before you fire it up, make sure you pull this little gizmo out. No drips. I think we're good. It's not too bad of a job and it certainly doesn't have to take six hours, but you do have to cheat. It's not really cheating if you get away with it. The official procedure from GM is, it's borderline insane. They want you to remove both front wheels, both front fender liners, the starter, the charge air cooler tube, 
and then they want you to strip the entire front end of the engine, the Fickum, the alternator, the AC compressor, the power steering pump, both of these big accessory brackets, and then they want you to remove the entire thermostat crossover assembly, which goes from one cylinder head to the other cylinder head. Yeah, I'm telling you, you cannot get that done in six hours. Not, not in our climate anyway. We're having some bizarre weather. The bad news is we have this haze, which is from the Canadian wildfires. There's an air quality alert for the entire state of Iowa, the entire state of Wisconsin, and most of the state of Illinois. But the good news is it's bringing in rain and we really need that. It's been the driest spring that I can remember. Normally this time of year, we would get an inch of rain a week. And we went six weeks with basically no rain. I know it's weird, the animals have been acting weird. We had a terrible year for black flies and gnats, but there's no mosquitoes. And the birds are crazy, but there are no mice. So I don't know what's going on. The other day we saw a bunch of groundhogs, like a herd of groundhogs. Never seen more than one groundhog at a time. One, two. <laughs> I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. At least a dozen. Must be the alpha. That thing is huge. Apparently we have the worst air quality on planet Earth. So we're gonna go canoeing. Thanks for watching.